the sub. All right, welcome to Startup Pack. We are excited to bring you a summary here of the NVIDIA Live uh, call that we just went through. So I'm gonna run through some of my notes here. Uh, they definitely started off by listing off that they had another huge record year, right? They sold tons of GB200, still being used at record levels, right? Blackwell's totally killing it. Um, and the, they seems like it's just absolutely seamless integrations of Blackwell. So I know we've seen the same thing as we've started to integrate Blackwell chips into a lot of our AI projects. We're definitely seeing no problems is pretty much plug and play swap out here right and that's what nvidia wants they want them to be the you know the the run rate like they want to be the single corner of the market here right their current run rate of production is back to 100 percent on the blackwell chips and they're already starting to talk about rubin gpus in the fab which is the next uh, generation here now china customers they said they have a lot of licenses for h20s but have not started to ship yet so we should see a whole bunch of revenue for q3 but they didn't price q3 revenues in for China said that they think there's going to be uh, two to five billion dollars of China orders but uh, mostly that's just going to be you know lots of a plug to the um, uh, to the US government uh, to Trump administration begging to and there's a couple of bags in here for to be able to allow us to sell to China right but right now they are not priced in to sell to China now they're talking about the CUDA libraries are getting better and better and that is true like one of the things that even Linus Trevald talks about here is that uh, the benefits that he's seen from Web3 and then now into uh, the AI hype and revel revolution, pardon my choke on my words there, um, is that the CUDA, the drivers in the current in the Linux kernel are getting better and better. We're seeing CUDA get better and better. They, of course, plug the Windows CUDA drivers didn't really plug Linux because there's no financial motivation for him to, uh, you know, include Linux drivers here. But he says the enterprise adoption is scaling up. And I'm and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we dig into it, too. Uh, they've said that Blackwell is has set the benchmark and they're right. The new Blackwell chips are really impressive. They really are um uh, the Blackwell to the previous generation are just running a lot better. I uh, just had a client who dropped on two new Blackwell chips that we're really excited to, to start to work on. Uh, they said that, and this is a quote, compute at unprecedented scale, right? They talk about companies and their ability to get returns. But the funny thing about this is they're trying to plug to companies, go buy our chips because we promise it's going to make you more money. But I don't know that anyone's really making a whole ton of money off of AI quite yet other than NVIDIA. NVIDIA is definitely the winner here, right? Now, NVIDIA is definitely definitely the leader in big AI, you know, and they talked about the Mac 7 and that GB200 was a clean sweep. That's a quote for these big companies, right? So the one thing that is really weird about this is they called out a bunch of companies, but they did not call out XAI. So I think that's kind of a, a snub at uh, Elon Musk for trying to turn away and building the AI5 uh, and AI6 chips with Samsung. So I think they're a little a little upset about that. They spent a long time talking about Envy, uh, Envy Link, which is the GPG GPU to GPU communications. It's interesting, but not super interesting to me personally, and nor do I think it's really a ton interested in my mo to my crowd. I think a lot of people, uh, I think this really is only going to affect the really, really large data centers. Um, he talked about Jetson Thor. So far, my Jetson's been a total bust. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Jetson because so far, Jetson's just been kind of a total bomb for me. Um, every time I've bought any of the Jetson computers, they, none of them seem to work right. Uh, so, however, I can take a PC off the shelf, just literally anything I buy off Facebook Marketplace, slap a GPU into it, download Olama, and I'm off and running, right? Like, or, uh, you know, spin up PyTorch or something like, you know, just it's really easy to get started, right? And so I haven't been a big fan of their embedded stuff yet. I haven't really seen a lot to it, but man, they're sure plugging for robotics. Um, they talked about the revenue was down from China. They talked about some of their other revenue numbers. I'm not going to get into a ton of the finances of this because that's not really my motivation. I'm in, I'm in this for the tech, right? Uh, they talked about Blackwell's coming to GeForce, right? So the desktop cards here. It says the Blackwell coming to the GeForce is going to get 5K resolution at 120 frames per second. That is really impressive. Now, they're partnered with OpenAI for GPT OSS models, and they talked about a lot of the other open source models. This is, of course, what my ears, of course, picked up. They talked about the Windows developers can run it and the, the Windows drivers can run it. But I'm going to plug here and say the Linux CUDA, Linux CUDA drivers run way faster. So then, you know, but there's no financial motivation for him to plug Linux, of course. But there is, of course, for that partnership with Windows. Talked about self-driving. Again, didn't message mention anything about Tesla because they've gone with the AI5 
AI5 and AI6 chips. They're, they're working with Samsung in a huge partnership there, which is a total snub to NVIDIA. So there was definitely no mention of Elon, XAI, Grok. There was no mention of any of it, even though he name dropped almost every other big provider out there. So definitely Hoang was throwing that at, at, uh, at Musk there. He's talking about there's uh, just a little bit about the revenue, 72% uh, gap margin, huge margins. These guys are just raking in the money and they can charge whatever they want for these chips because they are the leader right now. Um, went over some of the other finances that I'm not going to really spend a ton of time on, but he talked about the vision of growth for 2026. And he says, look, there's an evolution of reasoning here. He talks about the agenic AI. And the funny thing about it is we've seen here, and if you go check out my previous videos, you'll see that we've really uh, read a bunch of the reports where reasoning and deep thinking are really getting debunked. And part of the problem is, is we know that AI hallucinates, right? So if you get a hallucination on step two, well, step seven is terrible at that point because it's moved off onto this hallucination, right? And so reasoning has been totally debunked, but who wins on reasoning? The ones selling the tokens and the ones selling the chips to power the tokens, right? That's the winner. So of course he's bet this long five minute tired about how reasoning has gotten so much better and blah, blah, blah. All of that is bunk, totally bunk. But then at the very end, he mentions CapEx at a 600 billion and they're a clean sweep on the winners of AI. And that's absolutely right. Uh, somebody asked him a question about, uh, about uh you know selling to china and he pretty much just blamed trump um he talked about somebody asked about some of the competitors with broad comments and the others he dissed them of course pretty hard and then just you know acknowledged that uh you know they're really working to ship to and this is actually a part where i actually kind of appreciate it right he said very few products get created but few but sorry a lot of products get created, but very few are making it to production. So this is a reference to the MIT study that just got done, right? But who's making a ton of money off of that? NVIDIA is because those 95% of those projects are still being powered by NVIDIA while people are spending tons of money trying to get their AI project up off the ground. And who wins? NVIDIA is still selling chips, right? So Hang knowledge is they're making a ton off the dev, not just off the shipping. So NVIDIA is available everywhere and they have the corner of the market. And this is a paraphrase from Huang. I was having fun, but he's like, why would you use anything else? And he, of course, said something a lot longer than that. But he says building AI is complex. Performance per watt, NVIDIA, Blackwell is the best out there. And that's true. There's actually no debating that, right? So the, he says they're the full stack solution for AI factories. Now, this was another plug to their like um, their Envy link. But again, I think a, I'm really interested in these medium businesses here that are building AI systems using, uh, you know, workstation type computers rather than massive racks and racks and racks of server. So I agree with this. I think you can take any machine off of eBay or Facebook Marketplace, slap a huge NVIDIA GPU into it, install you know a lot of your PyTorch and a lot of your download your stuff off of hugging faces and you're off and running right there's a ton we can do with that so he talked about the top building are huge percentage that there's a lot of medium to large businesses that are going to catch up more and more so he's saying that AI will affect the GDP growth now I'm going to throw a plug in there and say it hasn't yet other than NVIDIA NVIDIA and some of these uh, mag 7 are making a lot of money off of it because they're selling this stuff right so they want to provide the infrastructure and in NVIDIA. We don't just want to be a GPU company. We want to be the AI infrastructure company was kind of his big tagline. Now he says, and this is his, of course, big drop here was they say it's a safe estimate that it's a three to four million dollar estimate. Sorry, three to four trillion dollar estimate is a safe estimate for the next couple of years. So I'm curious to hear what people think that this might uh, value uh, NVIDIA, at, what their valuations at. Leave your thoughts down below. Leave your your uh, your thoughts here is what they are now he's saying that they're seeing a 50 they're going to see a 50 percent growth like yet he's saying there's still a bunch more coming so they're the second largest in the computing market in the world uh, is is china so we talked about deep seek and quen now we've had a lot of success lately with quen so don't sleep on quen it's a pretty impressive open source model he started talking about the open source models and i was like yay plug the open source models and of course who's the winner to that NVIDIA is because you can't really run those on a, on a CPU. And I know a lot of you are going to come back and be like, I'm running my Mac. You're not going to run in production on your Mac. Um, so really, it is important for SaaS companies and like Startup Pack here because we love to build software for companies. Um, so here at Startup Pack, we do a lot of that work and we love to train software developers and we're training everybody to be using AI. And that means 
they got to be powered with some good GPUs out there, right? Now, this is not a quote, but Trump, again, or he had been begged, begged Trump, please let us sell to the whole world. Now, he talked about Blackwell versus Hopper versus, net, versus networking, and he said, look, we're really just focusing on Blackwell's really their big plug. He was like, we'll talk about Ruben and those later. Um, lots of other stuff, and then a final question... Not a lot of whole other things that I would mention, but he then, of course, went into his little red statement that he was using to finish off his uh, his statement. And he started to read from it. And he said, Blackwell's awesome. NVIDIA is this networking thing, which I'm like, woohoo. Customers are building more, making Huang a lots and lots of money. And that's really the summary of what Huang said there. Now, the interesting part about this is that, so let me refresh my screen here, but... Um, since the close of the call here, so this was actually when the market closed and right when they did it, they must not have anticipated because they're down three and a half percent, you know, in after hours trading. So, eh, you know, I don't know. They have plenty of percentage that I guess they can lose here, but there wasn't a whole lot on that call. I don't know if people were expecting to hear some new fancy announcements, announcements or something, but really there wasn't a ton there. So now I'm curious to hear what you guys think. What did you guys think of the call? Make sure you leave your comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Here's Startup Hack. We love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies so reach out if we can help and here's some great information about our services hi i'm spencer a fractional cto with over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development i've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours as your fractional cto you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount my team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.